so good morning to today we will continue our discussion on the approximate solution which was attempted originally by square and in this case um, we write down the integral formulation of the boundary layer equations for natural convection so we have the momentum integral equation and the energy integral equation which was derived and the approximation comes in the form of making a guess for the velocity and temperature profiles. So, in this case since the natural convection problem has a maxima in the velocity profile somewhere within the boundary layer right something like this. So, therefore, we have to be careful to choose the um, more or less a reasonable reasonably good approximation for this variation. We cannot um, therefore predict this with a linear profile or even a quadratic profile for that matter. So, unlike the external force convection boundary layer therefore, the choice of velocity profile here has to be at least in the um, you know in the minimum order that we have to take is a cubic polynomial <coughs> okay. And similarly when we uh, look at the temperature equation here we can make approximations ranging from linear all the way to uh, you know quadratic or cubic like the way we did the external force convection. So, for, for the present case we will consider a quadratic variation in the temperature profile okay. And the other ap approximation that square did was because we have basically several unknowns here we do not know the reference velocity we do not know the uh, momentum boundary layer thickness and also the thermal boundary layer thickness however, we have only two equations. Therefore, he made the assumption that the two boundary layer thicknesses are approximately the same. So, this is valid if your Prandtl number is close to 1 it can be between 0 0.7 to something like 1.2, 1.3 which most of the gases are within this particular range of Prandtl numbers and therefore, this is not a bad approximation to make ok. Now, um, in order to find these coefficients we have 4 coefficients in the velocity profile and 3 in the temperature profile we have to write down the suitable boundary conditions for them. So, let, let us list down what are all the boundary conditions in terms of velocity and temperature. So, what are the important boundary conditions we can write. So, this is your y and this is your x. So, y equal to 0 is nothing but eta equal to 0 <coughs> what can we write at eta equal to 0 u equal to 0 and what will be the second boundary condition <coughs> hmm? at eta equal to 1 u equal to 0 again we do not have any velocity outside the boundary layer in the natural convection case and number 3 we need totally 4 boundary conditions. So, what will be the third boundary condition we can write hmm? Where do you want to write the third boundary condition? At the wall or at the boundary layer? At wa at eta equal to? Hmm? Zero or one? One. What is the condition? Du by dy or du by d eta is equal to 0. So, before we give a boundary condition to the higher order derivatives we have to give it to the first order derivative ok. So, if you apply the fourth boundary condition at the wall what it would be? Hmm. So, d square u by d y square is equal to 
Hmm? Write down the momentum equation from the momentum equation tell me g beta into t wall minus t infinity by nu and then minus sign ok. So, you see that the boundary condition at eta equal to 0 is for the second derivative. So, before giving this we have to give a first derivative boundary condition at eta equal to 1 we cannot directly jump to this ok. So, therefore, now we have 4 boundary conditions we can substitute into this polynomial here ok. So, try to find out the 4 constants or coefficients I will list down the, uh, the final profile ok after you do all the manipulation. So, you will end up with u by So, this is the final profile that you will be getting after all the <coughs> manipulation ok. Yeah 1 minus y by delta the uh, it should be yeah it should be 1 minus eta the whole square here right right that is correct ok. Now, I, I think the second part finding the temperature profile you can do it quickly here. Uh, so, let us write down the conditions we need 3 boundary conditions. So, at eta equal to 0 what is your value of theta? <coughs> hmm? 1 and at eta equal to 1 theta equal to 0 and then third boundary condition d theta by 0. So, apply these three conditions quickly and find out the temperature profile in terms of theta. So, what is the coefficient a 1? 1. Okay. So, what do you get finally, if you put them what are the coefficients b 1 and c 1. So, b 1 will be minus 2 1. So, therefore, the temperature profile comes out to be simply 1 minus eta the whole square. Okay. If you substitute it, so you will be getting nothing but 1 minus eta the whole square this is this is 1 minus 2 eta plus eta square which is 1 minus eta the whole square ok. So, that now that you have the approximate profiles can you check the location where the maxima is obtained. 
So, now that you have the approximate profile a cubic velocity profile you still do not know where the maxima can occur which location which location at which y. So, can you now use this profile and find out find out two things one is the location the other is the magnitude of u max. Uh, 1 by 3 ok. So, if you apply the condition d u by d eta equal to 0 so this is the condition for finding the saddle point ok. So, from this it turns out to be that eta equal to 1 by 3 will satisfy this condition ok. And now what is the magnitude u by u reference at eta equal to 1 by 3? Anybody has a calculator can check this. One by three, two by three, the whole square. What it is? Huh? Four by twenty-seven. Okay. So eta equal to one by three. So what is the corresponding value of y? So y therefore delta by 3 correct. So, if this is your boundary layer thickness delta one third of this. So, we are actually not drawing this correctly here. So, if you take one third it will be somewhere like this and then. So, this will be where it is peaking So, this location here is your delta by 3 and this is where the maxima exist this is the where u max yeah why can't you take u by u reference equal to 1 and 19 u by u reference well i mean we don't know what is this reference okay in the beginning it could be anything okay now from the profile you are getting actually where where is the exact value of the maxima if you are um, u is equal to u maxima i mean um, now this is not correct because the location is coming out to be 1 by 3 and also u by u reference is not coming out to be 1 it is coming much smaller than that so so your reference is actually somewhere either this side or this side okay you understand your reference is some value which is actually 4 by 27th of u reference right. So, this, so this is the maximum so your u by the this is your this is your actually the value of your you can say this is your maximum your maxima is actually 4 by 27th time your u so your u reference is some value ok you are, you are not worried about what it is but you are relating it with the u maxima through this polynomial. Sir, but the thing is for eta equal to 1 by 3 if we take the d square by d eta square it is coming out to be positive. So, it will be minimum right. It should come out to be negative <coughs> does it come out to be positive it should come out to be it should come out to be negative. Huh? It is negative right yeah it should come out to be negative Sir how accurate is this value? Uh, well ok so this is only for when we assume a cubic polynomial if you assume a quartic polynomial this might slightly change ok. But this is an indication telling you that you can have any reference velocity but if you know the profile approximately you can actually get the value of u max. So, in this case the u max is actually a small fraction of u reference. So, that means what what can it say about u reference u reference is much larger than 
u max and can you pinpoint any value here which is much larger than u max no so this is some value that you have put as your reference it doesn't matter okay however what is important is finally you are able to relate your u reference with respect to your u max okay so if because you st you don't know strictly what is the value of u max if you want to use that as a reference you don't know what is u max exactly but u reference you know because we estimated from the scaling analysis that is nothing but square root of g beta t wall minus t infinity into h this is the approximate order of u reference okay so from this therefore we should be able to get some idea about at least where the maximum velocity profile occurs which we have seen as one third of the boundary layer thickness and this again varies you see the boundary layer thickness itself varies with x so the location correspondingly changes and we have also established a relation between u max and u reference okay u max is smaller than u reference yeah so u reference is some value theoretical value it is not exactly lying on the profile so this is what you have to basically conclude okay because you cannot practically identify a point which is larger than u max correct so the u max is a small fraction of your u reference means u reference has to be some hypothetical or theoretical you know value which is not identified in this particular profile okay but that doesn't matter because finally once you relate your u reference to u max so you can always plot it on a physical diagram okay so you can always now rechange the reference you can use u by u max and you can use the scaling factor to scale it so it doesn't matter okay so what we will do next is once the profiles are obtained so you can substitute back into the integral equations momentum and the energy integral um, and you can of course integrate it out because unlike the external force convection you don't have two boundary layer thicknesses so you don't have to define a prandtl number and then say prandtl number greater than 1 you can therefore neglect the ratio of delta t by delta and all that okay so you can directly substitute it you have only delta this is the only boundary layer thickness but what you don't know is also your u reference okay so the exact magnitude of u reference is also not known so therefore um if you just simply substitute and integrate it with respect to y th this is the following equation that you will get so i am assuming that you will be able to do the integration so that is if you substitute for u square as u reference square into eta into 1 minus eta the whole square okay into this so integral <coughs> 0 to 1 delta into d eta okay so this integral will now lead to 1 by 105 okay similarly on the right hand side you have <coughs> if you substitute for your temperature profile into this so this will be integral 0 to delta g beta into so in terms of theta you can write this as theta into t wall minus t infinity dy and you can substitute the profile for theta as 1 minus eta the whole square and integrate it the others are all constant g beta t wall minus t infinity so if you integrate it you will get 1 by 3 as the constant and then you will have um g beta into t wall minus t infinity into delta so dy you can write it as delta into d eta okay and you also have minus nu into du by dy at y equal to 0 now what will be this if you substitute this profile what will be the value of du by dy at y equal to 0 y equal to 0 indicates what 
theta equal to 0. Hmm? So, you will be getting minus nu into u ref by delta. Okay. So, in terms of du by dy. Okay. So, this is your momentum integral after you substitute the approximate profile. Similarly, the, the energy integral also can be reduced. Um, so, I will just write down the expression here 1 by 30 times d by dx u reference times delta. So, that is you are substituting for u and t minus t infinity as theta into t wall minus t infinity. Okay. So, if you do the integration you get 1 by 30 and on the right hand side what do you get for minus alpha dt by dy at y equal to 0. Hmm? So, what will be? So, this is 1 minus 2 eta plus eta square. So, what is d theta by d eta at eta equal to 0? Minus 2. Therefore, how do you transform this? You can write therefore dt by dy as dt by d theta into d theta by d eta at this is at y equal to 0. So, this becomes eta equal to 0 into d eta by d y. Okay. So, from your definition of theta your d t by d theta is nothing but t wall minus t infinity. And what is d eta by d y? Eta equal to y by delta. So, d eta by d y should be 1 by delta. This is by delta into d theta by d eta is minus 2. So, minus of this will become just 2 times. Okay. So, therefore, when you substitute this into this expression, so basically both sides t minus t infinity can be written as t wall minus t infinity into theta. So, t wall minus t infinity will get cancelled and you will have 2 by delta. So, this will be therefore 2 alpha by delta is that okay? So, this will be your energy integral. So, now therefore, so we have two equations, two ODEs in terms of what u reference and delta two unknowns okay now how do we find these two so one thing what we can do is make a polynomial approximation for u reference and delta which varies with x because in order to do this differentiation we have to know what is the variation of u reference with respect to x delta with respect to x which we don't know okay so therefore let us make an approximation that u reference is equal to c1 some x power m. So, this is how it varies. Okay. Similarly, let us make an approximation then that delta varies as c2 x power some n. From the scaling analysis, when we did the similarity solution, we know these constant we exponents m and n. Do you remember what this m and n were if you from the similarity solution? So, from the original Polhausen solution, hmm? 
So what was u reference? The, uh, the order of magnitude of u reference was g beta delta t x square root. So therefore there it was x power half okay. So m should actually come out to be equal to 1 by 2 but since we right now assume we do not have any knowledge of similarity solution we cannot force this condition from this okay. We are doing this independent of whether the similarity solution exists or not. So whatever we have done in this case we have not got any input from the similarity solution okay. So therefore this is what we know from similarity solution and from the approximate solution we should be able to extract the value of m as 1 by 2 and what about n? What is the dependence on x? x by Grashof number to the power 1 by 4 okay. So we have 1 minus 3 by 4 that is what x power 1 by 4 okay that is n equal to 1 by 4. So this is what we should be finally concluding from the approximate solution. So what we will do we will just let us for the time being assume some x power m, x power n we do not know these exponents let us put them into the equations 1 and 2 here okay. Then in order to balance the order of equations on the left hand side and right hand side the terms we have to equate the, the powers to be the same. So you cannot have in order to dimensionally satisfy the equation the order of x on the left hand side and right hand side should be the same. On the left hand side you cannot have x cube and the right hand side you cannot have x power 1 by 4 then dimensionally it will not be consistent okay. So what we will do is we will substitute this into this equation and then equate the order the exponents on both sides and then from there we will deduce what will be the value of m and n okay. So if you substitute uh, C1 x power m into the u ref and uh, C2 x power n uh, the momentum integral will be what is more important is the order of x. Okay, you do not have to worry about the other constants which are multiplying them because they are all just constants okay. So all this but only the order of x you have to pay attention okay. So that has to be equated the same on both the sides. So equation 1 becomes 3 and 2 becomes 4. So from this therefore in order to make sure that they are dimensionally consistent from equation 3 what is the condition 2m plus n minus 1 should be equal to huh? n which should also be equal to m minus n okay. Now from the second from the equation number 4 m plus n minus 1 should be equal to minus n <coughs> okay. So if you solve this you will be able to satisfy this with values of m equal to 1 by 2 and n equal to 1 by 4. Okay. So even directly from this if you equate n and cancels you have m equal to 1 by 2 and then if you 
again substitute m equal to 1 by 2 you can get the value of n from this second equation and the same thing will satisfy also this equation okay. So m equal to 1 by 2 n equal to 1 by 4 satisfies both correct. So now therefore you see that this is correct because from these similarity solution scaling analysis that is what we have already obtained. So now it, we can at least be assured that the order of magnitude of values we get from approximate solution will be correct because we are predicting the behavior variation with respect to x correctly. Now the next step is to find out what is the exact value okay. So now so since we know uh, m and n so this we can substitute for m and n in the equations 3 and 4 and what we have is 2 equations 2 constants c1 and c2 correct. So these constants are coming from u reference and delta okay. We now know m and n only the 2 constants c1 and c2 have to be determined. So if you substitute uh, for m and n so can you please quickly calculate if you substitute m equal to half n equal to 1 by 2 what is the how does equation 3 reduce to So what will be 2 m plus n by 105, hmm? 3 by 140 into what is the exponent of x here so it's, uh, 1, by 1 by 4 so it's 1 by 84 not 3 by 4 1 by 84. 84 and this should be x power 1 by 4 right on this side we have g beta t wall minus t infinity into c2 by 3 into x power 1 by 4 minus c1 by c2 nu x power 1 by 4 okay the powers of x should be same and similarly from this equation what is m plus n by 30 please check calculate once again huh? 1 by 40. So let us call this as 5 and 6. So you have 2 equations for 2 unknown constants C1 and C2 okay. So now if you solve them, solve these 2 equations, if you find it uh, too cumbersome to solve you can put it in a symbolic manipulation um, mathematical package like Mathematica or Maple. You can simply copy copy paste these two equations and ask, ask it to solve for C1 and C2 okay. So finally um, you will be able to therefore get C1 and C2 and from that therefore the expression for U reference because U reference you have assumed as C1 x power m. So we will get the constant C1 and m is already determined to be 1 by 2 okay. So the final expression comes out to be u reference by x is equal to 5.17 u.952 plus Prandtl number to the power minus half and Grashof number to the power half okay. So if you group all the terms define Grashof number, Prandtl number. So this is what you will end up with. Similarly, delta by x. So delta is c2 x power n. So once you get c2, 
So, you can also get the expression for delta 3.93 into Tantal number minus half so therefore finally so we have the correct expression to determine the exact magnitude of u reference and delta okay so for a given local Grashof number and Prandtl number you can get the exact value of u reference okay now you see that u reference is actually a function of x so there is nothing like a constant reference for the entire plate so each location the u reference changes okay and similarly the corresponding variation in the boundary layer thickness is also obtained so now what is the final step hmm? So, you have got your two unknowns. So, what is remaining? Hmm? What is remaining to be determined? Nusselt number, finally. Okay. We have the exact solution from most track okay now similarly we have to get a correlation for nusselt number from this so how do you get nusselt number so local nusselt number hx by k which is minus k dt by dy y equal to 0 divided by T wall minus T infinity into K. So, we already have the profile for temperature and we already got dt by dy at y equal to 0. What was it? Hmm? minus d t by d y at y equal to 0, 2 by 2 by delta that is it 2 by delta. So, we have k k cancels here therefore, uh, 2 x by delta into t wall minus t infinity. So, this is nothing but if you write in terms of d theta so, I think this will be absorbed. So, it is nothing but simply 2 x by delta. So, it is exactly inverse of this. Okay. So, therefore, we can write the final expression as 0 0.508 Prandtl number to the power half. What will be Grashof number to the power? 1 by 4 divided by we have 0 0.952 plus PR raised to the power 1 by 4. Okay, so therefore, we have <coughs> the final expression right. So, compare this with the Ostrak solution. <coughs> what was the constant value there? In, in the case of Ostrak solution, point uh, let me just confirm it. Point six seven six. 
So, we have 0 0.676, but we have to also divide it by 4 power 1 by 4. So, that comes out as 0 0.478, 0 0.478 times Grashof number to the power half into Prandtl number, Grashof number to the power 1 by 4, Prandtl number half divided by 0 0.861 plus PR raised to the power 1 by 4, okay. So, if you compare these two, okay, I mean of course, there are some variations in the constant coefficients both in the numerator and denominator, but if you calculate the absolute value for a fixed value of Prandtl number, so then this comes out to be very close, okay. So, this value is also slightly smaller, this value is also smaller. So, finally, you will get a very close match between the exact solution and the approximate solution, okay. So, therefore, doing an approximate solution um, in this case also will be able to get satisfactory agreement, okay. And but however, compared to the external force convection, this is not so trivial. Okay, you had to uh, guess the variation of u reference delta, and then you had to calculate the exponents and then coefficients. So it's a little bit roundabout. Okay, In the external force convection it was very straightforward. You know your reference velocity, therefore only delta and delta t have to be calculated. In this case you have to make some approximations for that, okay. But nevertheless, uh, I mean um, I would suggest that if you are not interested in numerical solution, so then the approximate method will give you a straightforward correlation. Otherwise a similar effort will lead to a new ordinary differential equation which has to be again numerically solved. Okay. So, the same uh, procedure can also be extended to constant heat flux boundary condition since uh, I think you have already done this for the external force convection you should be able to repeat similar procedure for by extending the square solution. Okay. Yes. See that Prandtl number equal to 1, um, yes we, we, we started off uh, because that is to make an assumption in the reducing the number of unknowns, but does not mean that we will be omitting nu by alpha. We are not saying that we should always assume nu by alpha equal to 1, okay. Still that factor nu by alpha creeps up, here you have alpha, so therefore here you have nu, so when you calculate you will get the non-dimensional Prandtl number, okay. This need not be exactly 1, but to make the analysis simple we used this approximation here that is all. I mean that, that is also telling you that uh, both boundary layer thicknesses are nearly the same, so there is no point in differentiating between the two, but when it comes to the thermophysical property they are actually different. So, you are correct in the sense that uh, although we got this we cannot use this for very low Prandtl numbers and very large Prandtl numbers. This has to be applied where the Prandtl numbers are close to 1. So, in fact, most of the natural convection problems are done with gases, okay. You do not force uh, um, very very large Prandtl numbers or very small Prandtl numbers into you know natural convection mode, right. So, we will stop here and then um, in the remaining class that is in the evening at 5 o'clock we will complete the, the rest of the natural convection parts because uh, so far we could find exact solutions or approximate solution, but for most of the problems in natural convection especially 
um, where you have other configurations like for example the same plate placed horizontally instead of vertical then you have more complex boundary layer growth for which we cannot find exact solution. So we will look at some empirical correlations for those configurations and then for other uh, geometries like cylinders and spheres. So there are no simple solutions again okay. So we will I will just give you some um, empirical correlations and quickly go on to the internal configuration in internal flows how natural convection happens once again there we cannot get a closed form solution. So all we have to rely on numerical solution or experiments. So mostly they are all correlation based I will quickly go over uh, some complex configurations and the corresponding correlations and along with that I also want to suggest you a project with the natural convection this is the final final project which we which will be doing um, so that also I will give you an idea in the evening class okay thank you.